and welcome back everyone. In the previous episode, I showed how I painted this 1984 Porsche 911 Cabrio. Now, the car comes out of the paint booth, but before we can begin the reassembly, we're going to take a few extra steps in order to perfect the paint work. Particularly, I'm going to show how we can achieve a highly reflective, smooth show car look that will look amazing. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please give us a like and subscribe, it really helps a lot. Here we have our freshly painted 911. Although it looks really good, I want to perfect it. The first thing we're going to do is remove any dust or dirt that may have landed on the body before it dried. I also want to remove any runs that may have occurred in the clear coat. Now the first tool I'm going to be using is a denibber and it's made by Festool. It is a solid carbide scraping tool, and it has uh, one side that has a slight roundedness to it, and the others are flat. The slight roundedness is so that you can effectively go after a raised area without causing damage to the surrounding area. This effectively replaces the traditional razor blade method where you would take a razor blade and tape the edges. I found this tool to work better than the razor blade method. Now it does come with a little string that you do need to keep around your wrist. And the reason for this string is so you don't drop it because being carbide, it could shatter if dropped. But I'm going to go ahead and show uh, the process of denibbing, and it's got to be done over the whole car. Usually the most uh, of this occurs on the, the horizontal surfaces where, where dust uh, settles more, um, but you got to look over the whole car. Here I'm going to close in on a dust nib and demonstrate the first step in the process see if you can see this dust nib in this camera, but there's one right here. Um, let's see if we can show that any, let's see right here. You see that right there? Okay. So I'm going to take our, uh, our tool here and we're just going to just slightly go over it. No pressure, just letting the tool do all the work. I'm going back and forth at a very low angle. My car is rounded here. Okay, and as it stops grabbing, you can go a little faster. But basically, it is taking that nib top of it and just trimming it off. So you see, like, see, still got a little bit of it there. But it's cutting it down, making it more or less equal to the orange peel that's, that's there. See if we can show that a little bit better. 
you see the nib that's right in the center of it. And we basically cut it off. There's a certain point where the tool really doesn't cut anymore. And I think at that point your, your nib is pretty well equal to the surrounding orange peel. And um, we just stop at that point and uh, move on to another point. So I'm going to show here, this area right here was sanded with some 1500 grit. And by the way, we're going to sand the whole car. Um, you know, that's part of the cut and buff process, as you'll see. But so you might ask, well, why not just sand it? That should take out the nibs. Well, it doesn't. If you see here, there's still a nib right there. And uh, sanding did not did not remove that um, because the uh, the nibs are so small the sandpaper just sort of like goes over it. It does take it out somewhat, um, but it would take a lot more sanding of the unaffected areas to 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 reduce the size of that nib. So that's why denibbing is a way to uh, sort of not only hurry the process along, but also make it so you don't have to remove so much clear uh, to level the surface. But it reduced it quite a bit further by just isolating on that one part. That one's more difficult, so I'm just going to keep dragging it instead of pushing it. Sometimes you find that a dust nib doesn't agree with you running the tool over it, meaning that you run the tool over it and the tool will stop abruptly because the dust nib is almost like a little wall against it. For those instances, I don't like to force it because if you do, you could actually damage the paint, tear it off really. So what I like to do there is actually run the tool in the opposite direction. It does take longer but it's a smoother way until we can get that dust nib down enough so that we can run the tool over it in the proper direction. When you find these dust nibs near the edges of panels, it has to be treated a little more delicately because the edges typically have less paint and so it's easier to uh, cut through all of the paint if you're not careful. So I'm being a little more careful here and staying away from that edge as much as possible. Now there are a number of dust nibs on this car and perhaps a little more than usual. What happened during the paint process was the fan, the exhaust fan that I normally use, it actually died mid paint. So I had to um, get another fan in its place. Unfortunately, the fan that I put in its place was much higher volume so it sort of contributed to um, having more dust particles cross over the body. 
you do need a fan when you're painting because um, especially when you're painting clear the the room will fog up very fast uh, when you're spraying this clear and such to the point where you really can't see what you're doing I generally like to sand by hand using a small foam block but this can wear you out so I have this 3M sander and I use it with a an interface pad which is a sort of a, a foam uh, pad that goes between the sander and the sandpaper and what this does is it sort of buffers the effect so that it, you're less likely to damage a panel uh, by the hard disk. So I'm not going to use the sander everywhere. I will use it mostly on the on the uh, the flat surfaces. But when I get to sharper uh, surfaces like the ends of the uh, fenders and the flares. That will have to be done with the the hand block. It's just too easy to uh, to burn through paint on these harsh angles. <coughs> if you didn't have any dust nibs then you could just leave the paint the way it is and it would look pretty much like every other car with a, just a moderate amount of orange peel. But doing it this way, we're able to knock all that orange peel down and we're going to have a really nice flat finish that when you buff it, it's just going to be close to mirror-like. Okay, so now we've got our, uh, we've gone over the whole fender with, um, with our orbital sander and uh, all of the uh, the clear coat is sort of dried on there as a haze so I'm going to wipe it all off now and then basically go into inspect and see how I how I like it you know how does the um, the level of orange peel look if I want to have any at all and also how do the nibs look because if you can see the nibs uh, here now you'll see them later when you when you polish it okay so next we're going to be using a uh, a new piece of 1500 sandpaper on a small foam flexible sanding block and this is where we're going to get into all the uh the the curves that the uh the big sander just won't get to so we're going to use wet water and we're going to basically carefully get in here and always being careful wherever there's a sharp turn not to sand that area too much you might go right up to it but don't actually sand it Okay, so here is our fender and it has been sanded down completely with 1500 grit. Most of the orange peel is gone. So the next step is to use the buffer and buff it and see how it looks. After buffing, we can then decide if we are getting the orange peel removed in the level that we wish or if we should be sanding each panel more.
couple minutes of buffing. So you're going from this flat back to gloss. And that's got a good reflective um, property to it there. It's got very little orange peel. So little that it really doesn't matter. And um, we'll buff this several times and this will look outstanding when it's done. You don't want to ever burn the paint. So you want to always keep a good amount of liquid here, uh, compound. And when you're spinning the, uh, the uh, buffer on it, you don't want it to get hot. Um, you can actually dig into the clear if you if you get it hot and then you stay in one spot long enough. So you just want to keep it moving all the time and let the uh, let the compound do the work. Once the compound is all used up, then stop and either put on some more or go to another spot and put on some more compound, and then just keep working it. Again, stay away from um corners for extended lengths of time you know run, run a pass on it but don't sit there and and, and rub that paint off because it will come off if you keep, stay there long enough and you will want to um choose a grade of uh, cutting that is comparable to what you sanded it with so this one says it removes 1200 to 1500 to 2000 scratches so i could have sanded that even up to 2000 if I wanted to, um, but it seems to be taking out the 1500 scratches just fine. Okay, so that's about uh, two passes, two to three passes of buffing, and it looks really, really good. There's um, a few spots that need to be buffed a little more, but that's basically where I, where I like to take it and before I move on to another spot, because, um, you know, I'm going to hit it again anyways, especially once you take it outside. You'll see in other spots you need to get. But that is, uh, you know, I don't know if you see that reflection, but it's just, it's got a really good mirror quality to it. That clear, um, you know, and so, uh, so it needs a little more buffing right here and so on. And always the hard spots to get to need a little more and now I'm moving on to the hood and start the process all over I'm gonna start with the de-nibbing and of course the hood being a uh, horizontal surface it probably got a lot more definitely got a lot more dust nibs and um, that's one of the reasons why if you can put the uh, take the hood off and mount it against a wall and then spray it against a wall. Um, you get less dust nibs. Having said that, with this little tool, it doesn't seem to be, you know, you're gonna get some dust nibs anyway, so it's kind of a trade-off to decide what you wanna do, but. <laughs> Thank you. 
So here's an example of uh, some of the kind of imperfections that the cut and buff process will take out. If you look there, you'll see that looks to me like the beginning of a run. It's not a very big run and you can barely feel it, but that's what's going on there. It seems like the clear coat had a little too much there. And so it uh, was just barely starting to run. When doing this sanding work, I have to be mindful about how much clear I am taking off. If you take too much off, then you could go into the underlying base coat. And this will not only leave a imperfection in the coat, but it will also reduce that area's UV protection. So how much can you actually sand? This is going to be hard to say, but for me, I typically will put down not only the two recommended coats of clear, but I will put a third coat down. This, according to the text sheet, should give me around three mils of clear. From my experience, I seem to put on a little more than that. Sometimes, believe it or not, I can actually remove a ding that occurs later by just sanding flat the clear. But what does three mils look like? It's actually not that much at all. If you look at this feeler gauge, this is three mils. And like I say, from my experience, I usually have more than this, but this gives you a rough idea of how much there is on there. That being said, it takes a, quite a bit of sanding with 1500 grit paper to wear through, but it can happen. So then this begs the question of, well, if three coats is good, why not put four or five or six? Well, you can do that, but what happens is each time you put a coat of clear on, the first one will go down typically flat, but the next one you're building upon that. And so I guess the best way to say it is that it's, you're starting to build up layers of unevenness. If you really want to have, you know, like five or six coats of clear, the best way to do it is to go ahead and shoot two or three coats, then just cut the whole thing down with 600 grit, then come back and shoot however many more you want, two or three, again, and then even repeat that process. I did this on my personal 914 and it came out really nice. Okay, we are at uh, day, basically day two of this project, give or take. Um, I've kind of moved on to the other side of the car now. Um, this door here has been sanded completely flat. I'm getting ready to, to buff that one out. Um, some things to consider is obviously when you do this work, wear some uh, clothing that uh, can get splattered on. A lot of this compound will splatter on you. Um, with that out of the way, um, I'm going to show a few uh, sort of tips about when, when you're doing this. Um, one is basically to, to get it sanded to a level of consistency um, prior to buffing it. And that is only kind of something that experience will tell you only. Um, but more or less, if, if it looks completely flat here then it's going to look good when it's buffed um, but that's not always the case or sometimes little things that don't even show what it's sanded flat um, and that just is going to take a little experience um, And 
and I'll work all the way to the door. And you want to listen if you hear anything other than this. You know, you might hear a little more high pitched note. Well, that might be their little contamination there and you're scratching your paint. So stop at that point, wipe everything down, and then uh, make sure your, your sandpaper is clean and, and put some fresh water on it. Okay, show time. So. Just gonna work on a little area here to start with. So that's basically one pass. I basically run out of uh, compound. It's all been used up. I don't want to keep going or else I'll burn it. Um, doesn't really, feels a little warm, light, slightly warm. There's still a little bit of scratching here. Um, so it needs another pass. When you're doing this, the angle of your buffer, it's about like that. It's not flat on the surface, it's like this, and that's where you're buffing. So you're kind of buffing on this this portion of it. You never want to just buff like that. Um, it doesn't seem very effective and you have less control, but right here is more or less where you're going to have a lot of control over the thing. That's coming out very, very nice. And recommended to only do little areas like this at a time. Overlapping maybe a little bit. Um, if you if you start, I'm gonna buff the whole thing and you put compound over the whole thing, well then by the time you get over here, the compound's gonna be dry and it's not gonna work as effective as it did just there. So I would anybody here into western regalia right i have this spur here um that you basically fire this thing up something like that right and it gets gets all this uh compound out of there
Okay, so that is our door. Looking pretty darn nice now. Gone over it basically two passes with the buffer. And barring any little things that we might notice later, it's pretty well done and get go to the next stage. So it's it's got a really nice soft feel to it. Um, it's got great reflection as you can tell there. Looks gonna look even better outdoors. Each panel knocked out one by one, and um, I'm just gonna keep going. But I'm very happy with the way that door came out. And once we correct a little, a little more sanding there, we'll get everything basically to that level there. So this is the uh, the buffing pad that I'm using here, made by these people, and it just sticks on there like with a Velcro. And of course, I didn't put it on right, so I'm gonna have to center that. So, when is the best time to do this cut and buff process? Typically, the best time to do this is within days of painting the car. Um, you know, give the car a couple days to, to uh, cure and then get to it. I mean, you can go as early as one day afterwards started. Uh, but the reason you want to start earlier is because the paint is still curing. This clear coat is still curing and, and it's softer now. And why you want that is because the softer it is, the easier it is to sand and the easier it is to then buff out scratches and so on. And so that's very important. Uh, you'll spend considerably uh, a lot less time if you get to it early. Now, if you're not able to get to it so early, um, then I would may recommend going to this product right here. This is the turbo cut version of this, and it's a little stronger, so it can it will take out um, let's say twelve hundred grit scratches. So, um, so it's the same cutting power, but well, it's it's a little little stronger than this one, and. Um, so on fresh paint like this, you probably don't need to use that. But if it's if it's a little bit older, probably you'd want to use something like that. That way, it just it just cuts it faster and busts. Okay, looking a lot better. Kind of gotten those scratches out. Maybe a little more work to do on it. And now we're looking really good. And so I'm doing this hood. This hood is, you know, it's, a, it's the largest panel in the car. And it's also the hardest to get to because when you're having to lean over the car and you're holding this buffer, which is heavy, it strains the back, so it, it's um, probably the hardest panel to do on the car. Um, of course, if the hood was off, it'd be a little bit easier, but it's still going to be kind of hard because it's just a big panel. Um, but what I've been doing is breaking it up into little sections at a time. Maybe a little 12-inch area here. Started here, I did an area about like that. 
And um, have you noticed I have not removed any of the uh, of the uh, taping uh, from the painting process, and it should be apparent that the reason why is just uh, cutting and buffing makes makes kind of a mess. You get mess everywhere, so why why not just leave all that tape on the car? So here's after one pass here, and this is where I stopped. So you can see the difference. Oh, it's dull here, lots of scratches, and then you come over here, and it's just nice and soft and and reflective. And so that's what what uh, cutting and buffing does. Is it um, is it uh, makes you have a nice um, flat and highly reflective um, surface, so you don't um, basically eliminates the orange peel. Okay, so I've cleaned the uh, taken the time to just clean the whole car off now. And just so we can sort of assess the uh, what still needs to be done. So now that, that it's all cleaned, I can kind of identify certain little areas where it needs a little more buffing. Um, and we're going to do that and do it on this the wool pad and basically tackle any little small areas that just need a little more work before we move on to the foam pad. But we are looking very good at this stage and definitely drive off ready at this stage. It just really looks great, but we're gonna perfect it a little more. And that's enough for tonight. Okay, so now we are moving on to the final phase of our uh, buffing process. And now we're using, moved on to the foam pad. And uh, what this is, is it is a 3M Perfected 2 foam polish pad. It's a little worn, so I'll probably have to change this one out um, midway through this car. Um, so that's just going to remove the, the finest scratches. And I don't know if it's visible through the camera at all. But I've just done this side of the hood right here. And this side has not been done. Um, but I would say it's just kind of like a finessing. Getting out the, the finest of scratches. So you really get a, just the best possible shine that you can. And it's really coming out nicely. Very soft, very nice looking, and um, I can tell from the uh, from from the naked eye that this one is has not been done, and this one has. Don't know if that translates in the video, but it's certainly worth doing, and. Um, just taking it to the next level of uh, of perfection there.
thanks for watching and come back again for the rest of this. Tschüss.